So let's show how to go in and edit in the part view. Let's explain some of those screens and what they mean inside here. So first off, let's go ahead and press the part view button. And we're gonna learn what all of these tabs up here mean. So all of these different tabs, we're gonna learn what those mean. All right, so uh, stay with me on this one. This, this is actually gonna be fun. It's gonna show you how to really dig into your Integra and make it do some fun stuff. So first off, the first tab is tone lets you choose whether you're using a supernatural acoustic, supernatural synth, supernatural drum, PCM synth, PCM drums. Okay, that's what you can choose. And then you can choose from which bank you're using, the user bank or preset bank. Or if I wanted to, I could go ahead from here and just press the tone finder, and I can look for, for whatever I want. I can come in and look at these. And we're going, we'll go into deeper on this section in a later video. So let's exit out of here. So that's what this does, the tone section. And we can put this different tones in any of the 16 MIDI channels or MIDI parts in here in the tone. Now let's go to the next tab, which is the level. The level section right here is just that. It can adjust the level, the pan, the chorus, the reverb for each of the 16 MIDI parts. So also it can adjust what outputs they go to. The Integra 7 has eight outputs, and so let's explain them now. I'm gonna press the enter button right here. Output A is one and two. Output B is three and four. Output C is five and six. And output D is seven and eight. We can also route to the individual eight outputs. So if I wanted to, I can send them to individual outputs. This could be actually a very, very cool thing to do. So we'll just leave it on A. That's the most common you're going to do. Now here we can tell it to receive MIDI. This is the MIDI receive switch, so I can have it turn on or off. So if, if we want, we can have the Integra set to receive MIDI right here. So if it's not receiving the MIDI and it's supposed to be, this is probably your problem. Next, we can determine what MIDI channel that particular part is on. Now generally speaking, the parts and the MIDI channels are together. That's just the easiest way, but keep in mind, you can change any MIDI part to any of the 16 MIDI channels. And the reason why we would do this most, most commonly is to go ahead and layer. For example, if I have on part one a piano and part two a string, if I wanted to layer them together, I would put them on the same MIDI channels. For example, on MIDI channel one, I would hear two sounds. If I wanted to layer more sounds, now I have three sounds, now I have four, up to 16. So you can get pretty crazy with this. Okay, so kind of experiment with that and have some fun. Now let's go to the next tab, which is the EQ tab. Now on this tab, you see I have separate EQ for each of the 16 MIDI parts. And to be able to use them, all I have to do is spin the dial wheel and turn the switch on or off. So right there it's off, now it's on. And then you can adjust whatever you want right here for each one. Now all of these are saved inside this particular studio set that we're using. So go ahead and have fun with it. If you, if you wanted to bring up the mids or lows or highs or bring down whatever you want for your performance, you can do it right here. 